Gait is the translatory progression of the body that involves coordinated rotatory movements of the head, arm and the trunk. Pathological or abnormal gaits can be classified into two that is neurological gait and orthopedic gait. Under neurological gait, we have the Parkinson's gait, the hemiplegic gait, ataxic gait, scissoring or the cerebral palsy gait and the myopathic gait. In the orthopedic gait, we have the Trendelenburg gait, antalgic gait, backward lurch gait, hand to knee gait, high stepping gait, in towing and out towing gait. A mnemonic to remember neurological gaits mashed potatoes so M for myopathic gait A for ataxic gait S for scissoring gait H for hemiplegic gait P for Parkinson's gait For orthopedic gait you can remember the mnemonic BAT H square I so B for backward lurch gait A for antalgic gait T for Trendelenburg gait, H square, so one is the hand to knee gait and the other one is the high stepping gait, I for in towing and out towing gait. Parkinson's gait, it is caused due to inhibition of dopamine which is required for the basal ganglia to function. The patient usually has a stoop posture, gait initiation is affected, Resting tremors are present that is abnormal contraction of muscles. Freezing episodes are also present which means the person stops walking suddenly. The step length decreases, velocity is decreased, base of support is decreased and cadence which is number of steps are increased. Hemiplegic gait is caused due to damage to one side of the brain. There is no muscle power. As the patient improves, he moves into spasticity, that is overactivity of muscle reflex. Upper limb moves into flexion, lower limb into extension, shoulders are adducted, elbow flexed, hands pronated. No arm swing is seen. Legs go from external to internal rotation, that is circumduction gait is seen. Curling of toes present due to contraction of the plantar flexors and the intrinsic muscles of foot weight bearing starts from the mid foot and not heel antalgic gait also called as the painful gait or the limping gait it is caused due to weakness or arthritis in the hip or the knee joint for example seen in case of fractures the duration of the stance phase is reduced to avoid pain in the affected leg. There is no hip flexion to hip extension seen, therefore loading response to mid stance phase. The duration of the stance phase is reduced to avoid pain in the affected leg. There is no hip flexion to hip extension seen, therefore loading response to mid stance phase. Scissoring gait or the cerebral palsy gait is caused due to developmental disorder in children due to damage to the brain. Initial contact is on toes. There is no in towing or no out towing. Base of support is small. Excessive adduction of the legs is seen. Abductor muscles are weak. No dorsiflexion of the foot is present. Trendelenburg gait is caused due to weakness in the hip abductors resulting in pelvis drop on the opposite side in the mid stance phase that is weakness of the gluteus medius and the gluteus minimus muscle if the weakness of the bilateral hip abductors are present it is called as a waddling gait or the duck walk gait the patient compensates by lateral trunk lean ataxic gait is caused due to damage to cerebellum which results in involuntary movements. The patient has a wide base of support. 
no coordination and body stability sudden flinging of arms from one side to the other side step length and the stride length varies change in speech backward lurch gait the patient stands with the hip shifted forwards during heel strike the hip is extended so that the line of gravity moves anterior to the hip joint compensation is by the concentric contraction of the gluteus maximus muscle to shift the line of gravity posteriorly this type of gait is usually seen in pregnant women hand to knee gait normally during mid stance phase the knee is locked by quadriceps contraction if it is weak the knee flexes therefore to stabilize the knee for weight bearing the patient places the hand on anterior aspect of the knee joint to push the knee into extension for example seen in case of poliomyelitis patient high stepping gait during heel strike the toe drops to the ground due to foot drop therefore to clear the ground the patient flexes the hip and the knee excessively and raises the foot for example foot drop due to muscle paralysis in common peroneal nerve palsy in toeing and the out toeing gait the in toeing gait is also called as the pigeon gait the out toeing gait is also called as the charlie champlin gait in in toeing gait there is increased antiversion of the femoral neck which results in internal rotation of the hip to contain the femoral head in the acetabulum therefore resulting in internal rotation of the entire limb by inward pointing of toes therefore both the patellas point inwards this is called as kissing patella